Hello tanks and tankettes, welcome to Supporter Spotlight number 25 and today I've got a trio of tanks replays, in fact a trio of tank destroyer replays. They're all 914 so I've been able to record them all at 50 FPS which is not a thing I get to do as often as I'd like but uh, I try and uh, record at higher frame rates when I can. And we're starting off with this game from Armorama in the M56 Scorpion. Now, as it's 914, it's before it was actually buffed. But even so, when I first previewed this thing, I felt it actually wasn't terrible. I thought it was okay for a tier 7 premium tank destroyer. Maybe a little on the lackluster side in some ways, but it's been buffed now, so uh, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, a more attractive prospect these days. Probably more so still than the Kanon and Jagdpanzer, which had some gun buffs. I mean, this, uh, I think it was mobility, was it gun depression and also dispersion buffs. The gun itself wasn't touched because the gun was fine for a tier 7 tank destroyer. But the Kanon and Jagdpanzer basically had the same gun. In fact, it's always a worse gun for being a tier higher, so it was way more lackluster than uh, this thing was. But this isn't even a premium he's bought. This is actually on NA and this was during a Scorpion rental event because what they do on NA, which you're probably not aware if you only play on EU, is they uh, fairly regularly have these missions where if you fulfill some not very difficult requirements, you can basically have a premium tank to play with for a day or two just to try out essentially and I think it's actually a, a really nice system and I wish we had it on EU because you can't even try out the new premiums on uh, test servers these days you've got to wait till they get added in game and some of them don't so NA at least you've got the option of uh, if there's a rental event you can try it out but uh, not on other servers and that's because of course they are a bit more starved of players on the NA server let's put it that way anyway this is his very first game in this rental scorpion and uh, I don't know what kind of uh, crew he's got in it but they must be reasonably decent and as you can see it's a 90 mil gun I think it's got the same pen as the French 90mm guns, it's 202 average pen, 240 average damage, the rate of fire is pretty decent, the accuracy, aim time, all that kind of thing, uh, you know, they're okay. But, as this thing has got uh, literally 1 mil of armour, it's, I think, aluminium construction, so it's not particularly, it's, it's like made out of old lunch boxes or something. It's not a tough machine. So it takes damage very easily and it also takes uh, components and crew damage very easily as well. And that's going to be a problem because his team's dying at a rate of knots, including their artillery having just team killed that VKD who was the last uh, medium tank on their team. Now he was very low health. It was possibly just an unfortunate splash, but just looking at the minimap, uh, it seems like the kind of shot that the artillery, the GW Panther, probably should not have taken to begin with. But, of course, I don't get to see what was going off, uh, going on <laughs> even in that corner of the map, so uh, who knows. They've also just lost the ELC, which was trying to get around to their artillery. And he did get a shot into the T-67, which is fine. That leaves him a one-shot. However, Armorama is going to get spotted doing it, and that's a little bit risky. Now, I've just lost their own RT, and that leaves him with an 88, who... There we go, it's taken out the IS. So the cap is free from the threat of uh, the enemy team for now. And the 88 is actually just sticking around the cap area, and that's probably the sensible thing to do, because he's in an 88, it's not very fast. If he starts off coming down the valley to try and join Armor Armor, chances are he's going to get caught out of place. Now that's unwelcome! That's an M41, and he's just been derped in the face, oh dear. Now, I suppose the M41 gets points for actually putting on his man pants and trying to take out Armor Armor. And uh, given that Armor Armor took the hit, it's maybe quite lucky that uh, he didn't just get derped outright. Although, offhand, I don't know what the M41's uh, uh, average HE penetrating damage is, but 
even more lucky was the fact that Amarama only had a damaged gun out of that, considering how this thing takes module damage. I'm surprised that didn't kill half his crew. So he spots the GW Panther and obviously gets spotted himself, but the guy flies and misses, so that's fine. He's down. That just leaves an M44 and an enemy scorpion, who's probably also a rental scorpion. And he could, for that enemy scorpion, load up HE, but uh, AP is probably the safer choice, especially given that there's also an M44 still around somewhere. Now, worryingly, he gets lit up, he doesn't know where from, and if it's the enemy scorpion, well, he's an easy one shot. If it's the M44, he could be shotgunned. And almost is, but the uh, RNG gods do not favour the M44. It doesn't land close enough to splash him, and so he's got an easy kill. Except he drives forward and around for some reason, not sure why. Anyway, this is now two versus one. There's a, a shot at uh, Radley Walters here, which would be not at all bad for the very first game played in a tank. Except it is not to be. The enemy scorpion gets the drop on him. So it probably was that enemy scorpion that actually uh, lit him up the first time. And, well, we're going to jump ahead because the 88 has done the sensible thing. Set himself up in cover behind the cap. Because going to the enemy cap would be, frankly, giving the game away. He absolutely did the right thing here. The onus is now on that enemy scorpion to find him or cap. And as the 88 is full health, well, this is only going to go one way. So, yeah, the 88 could have given the game away, and fortunately, very sensibly, he didn't. He actually um, made the right decision. So there we go, victory secured. It's just a pity that that couldn't be a Radley Walters. However, there was a Pascucci's medal, so that's nice. So that was a first class, top gun and a high caliber. Not actually that much damage done, but uh, it was still enough to put him at the top of the team, as you'll see in just a second. There we go, 2,182 damage, seven kills, just shy of 1,000 base XP. The 88 in second place with 1,400 damage and four kills. The rest of the team, it wasn't particularly impressive. I mean, the artillery with minus one in particular, uh, if the VKD had lived, maybe that would have been slightly easier, but he was very low health, so there's every chance the enemy team would have killed him anyway. But uh, yeah, a nice profit for that, and uh, just generally a decent game. Next, we're moving up a tier, and moving over to the Soviet tank destroyers, courtesy of King Trigon here in the SU-101. Now this is not the first time we've had this machine in this particular uh, series, this particular strand. I'm pretty sure Island Man has also submitted one in this uh, this particular uh, tank destroyer before. And as far as King Trigon goes, this was, I think he said his third game in this. So, although it is not a popular machine generally, I think it still does have its fans because the big downside of this is no gun depression and this line generally are known for their exceptionally poor gun depression but they've also got very good mobility and generally best in class DPM. The DPM of the 263 line is uh, they're good, they're really really good in fact in some cases better than the British tank destroyers in this case, he's using a 122mm gun, and I couldn't tell you exactly which one it is. But I think it might be the M22. I'm not sure, though. I think it's the one that's got uh, 200 and... Uh, not 240. <laughs> no, that's that was the Scorpion. Uh, 440 average damage, rather than 390. And I think that's the M22, but I could be wrong. But as you can see, the rate of fire is uh, exceptional. He's just pumping out these 400 average plus damage shots over and over and over and uh, well we were at leak damage briefly there but he's now steadily marching towards 2k damage and uh, we're not even a couple of minutes in yet we're only just approaching the uh, over, only just over the three minute mark so you can really pump out the damage however he doesn't have a huge number of shells in this so it's one of these ones where although you have a really good rate of fire, you're going to have to be careful not to just spam the shells around like you can with some other high rate of fire uh, tank destroyers. Um, well, I guess the British ones are the only other 
a particularly high rate of fire machines. So, uh, although his uh, damage count is pretty decent, he is going to need to be a little bit careful because uh, the rest of his team, uh, I mean, it's not like they're completely dying at a rate of knots compared to the enemy team. It's just look at where they are on the minimap. They actually have quite a few down in that southeast corner. And in terms of uh, taking control of the rest of the, of the map, it's not that good. They've got an Object 704 and an IS holding back quite a lot of the enemies. They've lost a lot of tanks up on that, uh, that area. But not actually that many, because not that many went there. So he misses out on the chance to get the kill on the CDC because of that lack of gun depression. And uh, if he can get a bit more forward, they can clear out the WZ-120, maybe the T-54 can go and uh, nose around their artillery, in which case King Trigol would be in a pretty good position right now. But their own cap is seriously under threat. It's just an Object 704 and their own artillery. And, uh, well, we'll see how, they long, uh, how long they last even. So the WZ backs out. That lets Trigon get the kill. He's approaching 3k damage. However, that got him spotted and he's not exactly artillery safe right now. So he decides to get moving and oh, that splash. Yes, it's a good thing he did get moving because uh, otherwise that could have been a lot worse. So the T-54 roots out one artillery. He's down, that's good. But as Trigon spotted, the Eldrex 704 is about to go down. And in fact, he did with three enemies potentially going for the cap. They've also lost one of their artillery already as well. So the remaining RT gets a shot into the 54 Mod 1 and Trigon takes the kill. However, although this does have a really good reload, it's not going to be quick enough to take that Yak Panther 2 when he had the chance. So that's their RT down. He doesn't now have the, uh, the vision from that RT and although he's got binoculars himself, I don't think the base view range on this is particularly fantastic. And uh, his teammates in the chat there actually counselling the uh, or giving the advice that they should cap because uh, there's a chance that uh, the enemy team might cap except Trigon's here so it's actually not that much of a threat at all. And they did have the Yak Panther 2 go back to uh, defend, or the enemy Yak Panther 2 went back to try and defend their own cap but uh, of course there's three tanks there so that turned out to be a non-starter. So that just leaves the AMX M4 and uh, this is really not that much of a, a threat. It's a 90 mil gun, King Trigon can easily take the hit whereas that guy is uh, an easy one shot and he gets the kill just as the timer finishes. So that was a, a nice reasonably quick game and considering it was only his third game it was a, an ace tanker which is pretty good going. So that was a top gun and a tank sniper because he hit most of his shots, I think. Nearly 4k damage done, 5 kills, and he basically... I mean, they, the enemy team weren't going to win, but he basically made that a more satisfying victory from my personal point of view. I, I always prefer to try and kill all the enemies. Sometimes it's better to cap, but those occasions aren't very frequent. Most of the time, if you're after getting a decent, you know, damage and score and credit result, it's better to do damage and kill the enemies. So finally, we have this game from Island Man. We've had the previous two games be very, very, very good matchmaking. Actually, did I say Island Man? Wow, wow, I got that so wrong. I be the one true nub, there we go. <laughs> also known as Super Ranger when he's in Twitch chat. So, uh, yeah, no, wow. <laughs> He's not going to support me on, uh, on, uh, uh Patreon anymore. I've, I've completely pissed off two Patreon supporters in one go. There we go. How did I get them confused? I don't know. The names aren't even similar. Anyway, the point was, before I completely stuck my foot in it, this is horrible matchmaking. This is the Jagdpanzer IV, and again, a machine that got buffed in 915. All of the tanks with the short 88 gun, the uh, 88 mil L56, got buffed because that gun was uh, brought in line with the amount of penetration that it has in World of Tanks Blitz, where it has 145 mil of pen. Now, for the longest time, it's been 132 mil in the PC version, but in 915. Uh, as I've said, it was also brought up to 145mm of pen, which is 
for the Ag Panther 2, very welcome because you always had that choice of the low damage long 75mm gun, which is something like 150 average pen and 100 and something average damage, I can't remember exactly. Or you could take the inadequate penetration of the short 88. And when you're top tier, 132 is actually fine, but when you're bottom tier, it's really not, especially for a tank destroyer. So there's a lot of tanks benefited from this, machines like the T-40, the Heavy Tank Number no. 6, the VK-3002D, but uh, the Ag Panther 2 especially, it will have really benefited. However, the premium ammo did not get a buff, I think it's still 170 or 171, so uh, yeah, the premium ammo is um, a little bit less worthwhile, but you still need... Uh, a fair stock of it when you're playing machines like this. It's just the AP ammo becomes a lot more viable. Now given the matchmaking you'd think this would just be a horrible scenario for a Yag Panther 4 and normally it would do but this is going to be one of those rare times when actually it works out. And the fact that it is an 88 mil gun uh, with I think is it 220 average damage on the short 88 means that when you do land those hits when you actually do manage to pen uh, the damage can rack up reasonably quickly, it's just finding stuff that you can penetrate. Now he gets a hit into the Comet, which is just, uh, actually I was going to say just under an average roll, I think that was an over average roll actually, it was about 240. Not high enough to kill the Comet outright, he gets away with a couple of hit points left, but it drove him off anyway, and that just leaves this VKD. Now there's a chance that something might come in behind him, but for the moment he's got to worry about the guy in front of him who decides to just charge him down. And as you can see, 132 pen. Well, it's enough for a tier seven medium tank. He's not had to face any of the enemy tier eights yet. And there's not that many of them. I mean, it was pretty rough matchmaking, but there weren't that many of them at all. Now that guy also using the short 88. And as you can see, he is really struggling to pen the front of the Ag Panther. Now, I think if he'd just been aiming a bit better, he could have. But the armor on this thing is... Uh, did I say Yak Panther? Yak Panzer. Yak Panzer 4. Because of course it's Yak Panzer 4. Uh, the armor on this thing is good enough to bounce lower penetration guns. But uh, there are still a lot of guns around that can hurt you. Including the gun on that thing. That could be painful, except that flew straight underneath. Thank you, RNGesus. As you can see, the rate of fire is good enough that he could finish that guy off before he had another chance to fire. And while that little mouse wiggle, you can tell his feelings on the subject, I think he was quite thankful that that guy missed. And then we get the bounce on the side of a Yag Panther because, well, RNGesus giveth, giveth even, and RNGesus taketh away. So, hit into the T-150 for an exactly average roll, gets a fire, but the guy clearly had an automatic extinguisher, and uh, although he is in theory safe now from being hit from behind, it turns out that M44 artillery, or no, actually it was the SU-8, was uh, up in that corner where he could hit him. And now, having shot the T-69, he's also got this guy's attention. He's gone from being nearly full health to having nearly no health. So, this is exciting. He needs basically the FVP to come around and take advantage of this guy being distracted. So he gets another hit in, but it's not enough to kill a guy. Just barely avoids being hit by artillery. And now he's got to kill this guy. And fortunately, the T-69 was over-angling. So it actually does pen the side armor. Now, I don't know offhand what the side armor of the T-69 is. Uh, that was unlikely to have been an overmatch. I don't think it's that weak. I think he was actually over angling. But, well, he survived. And as you can see, there is a surviving Ferdinand on the other side. So, he really did do a lot on this side. It wasn't like he won the battle all on his own. Some of his other teammates did do uh, a bit of work. But when you see the final result, you'll see quite how much damage... I be the one true nub actually did do in relation to his teammates when he's a bottom tier tank destroyer in one of the machines that's generally regarded as being not very good. You know, when I played this, and I actually still have it in my garage, I always played it with the 105mm derp gun, except a couple of patches ago they removed that and I was very sad because 
that was my sole reason for keeping it around and so now it just sits in my garage doing nothing and has done so for several patches. So anyway, he manoeuvres his way around the side. I mean, it was a bit of an obvious move, but uh, he was always going to be able to out-aim the SU-8, and the SU-8 was going to have a hard time aiming through the arches anyway, so it gets the final kill, and that was the win. So, Ace Tanker, no uh, epic medals or badges there, but uh, as you can see from the score screen in just a second, it was a pretty impressive result, even so. Over 3,000 damage done. He put all of his tier 8 comrades to shame, absolutely. The only one that came close was the Ferdinand with 2200, who somehow managed to get a team kill earlier in the match. Don't know how that happened, but anyway. But yeah, that's not the sort of result you expect in less than 7.5 minutes for a Jagdpanzer IV in a tier 8 game. So sometimes, sometimes you can get away with ridiculous things, and it wasn't even getting away with ridiculous things in that particular scenario. It was just everything seemed to line up for him. He got enemies that he could penetrate. He got side and rear shots when he needed them, and uh, generally his gun behaved itself. And he also had some pretty nice damage rolls as well. So, yes, I hope that was a suitably entertaining one to finish up with, and I hope both Island Man and I Be The One True Nub will forgive me for my little blunder. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, you can hit the like button, leave any comments below, you can sub to my channel if you aren't already, and as always, stay tuned for more.